That <laughs> was exactly who Dial 1-800-Taylor-Swift. <laughs> Big reputation. Yeah, Taylor Swift's awesome. Yeah, hey. absolutely. Uh, Brunch. Hit it, boys. <laughs> It's fantasy football season, so Pete, tell me about fantasy football and specifically your team. Uh, I had my draft last week, but fantasy football is a game that's played between friends usually, or co-workers, or oh. just acquaintances, or strangers even. Mm. Uh, and you benefit off the real-life performances of uh, football players, pr- usually pros, mm-hmm. and uh, you know certain accomplishments they make in real life on the field will get you points or percentage of points, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes you're going up against another guy in your league mm-hmm. or 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 gal mm-hmm. or child mm-hmm. or a uh, non gender identified person. And Side note: We got to do a fantasy football league with our nephews. Go on. <laughs> That's right, uh, and then you. Uh, you, whoever has the most points at the end of the week could win that week, or you could tie in a very rare event that it was a tie. Um, but sometimes the leagues aren't structured that way either. Sometimes they are just uh, you know a, a number of people playing in a league, mm-hmm. and just throughout the course of the season, they will accrue points, and uh, just the winner at the end of the season with the most points wins. And there's daily fantasy now, you're telling oh, me. Oh boy, is there. And that's just the same thing, but you do it every you do, day. You you do it every day. New team, can, new day. New team, new day, and you can have the same players as mm-hmm. other guys in the league or gals, or you know we've already gone through this. Uh, but sometimes you can pick a different team every time. What if I'm playing daily fantasy and my team lost yesterday? Do I still get to play the next day? Oh yeah. And oh yeah. Your team usually does lose when you do daily fantasy because you're going up against. Sometimes thousands of people. Now, it sounds like it's not worth it to play against other that many other people. Wouldn't I want to play in a standard 10 or 12 or 14 team league? No, because the payouts on Daily Fantasy are usually pretty large. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the buy-in is usually pretty small. So it's a small wager with a high potential return. What kind of cost am I looking at to play in a standard fantasy sports league with friends? I would say anywhere from 10 to, uh, you know, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand. Depends on how much money you got. Dollars In- per person. So you're saying how much you play for depends on how much you're supposed to play for how much money you've got. That's right. <laughs> However much money you've got. <laughs> yes. You just <laughs> budget it out. Hey, and- do we want to play fantasy f- football this year? Sure. How much you got? <laughs> Exactly. And then you just play. <laughs> now, do you remain friends with the people after you lose all of well, your money? That's where you got to be careful because you have to be friends and play with uh, people that are within your tax bracket. Ah, uh-huh. interesting. Because you don't want to be a guy who's mag. It's like if you want to sit down at a poker table, you're not going to sit down at like a $45,000 max. Right. You're going to do it at like a $20 max. Okay. Table. Keep the stakes lower. Exactly. And that way, if you lose, you're so not ruined. If you're poor, you have to hang out with other poor people and make friends with them so that you can play fantasy football together. Ain't that America? John <laughs> Cougar Mellencamp said that. Hey, uh, for real though, I got to say that this is... Um, this is no one cares about your fantasy football team season thing. A... Not true. You care about your fantasy football team. Mm-hmm. And B, I don't care about, by and large, I don't care about so many things that another person might discuss with me. And that's not a, oh, I got standards. I care about whatever. It's just it's, it's likely that if you speak with somebody with any regularity, they're going to bring up something that doesn't necessarily interest you. Yeah. I think that talking about one's fantasy team gets a terribly undeserved reputation. Yeah, because I think that, you know, if you are if you have friends that love fantasy football, they're probably going to want to talk to you about your fantasy football team. Not all the time, but name a subject that you want to talk with like your friend with all the time. Right. So, it seems that you're right. I would agree with you. Tell you what. 
Friday or s- Sunday, I'd had a long weekend, done a lot of stuff. Quite frankly, it was a lot of fantasy football stuff. Uh, fantasy football stuff Friday, Saturday. The whole gang was in town. We had a blast. A lot of drinking, a lot of snacking, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Sunday, I'm relaxing at the movie theater, catching some The Invitation. We'll discuss that later on this very podcast. And Spoon, a band I like, is playing in Providence. They're on at 8. At about 6, friend starts texting me. Hey, do we go to this thing? I don't know. We're probably going to be rushed. It's going to be too late or whatever. We decide at 7 o'clock, screw it, let's go. Bust ass, get down there. It was crazy. We missed like a, quite a good amount of it. Kind of unnecessary to make that trip to not see all the concert. But it was an awesome time in Spoon Rocked. Now... You don't you don't listen to Spoon much, I don't, right? No. You don't really care. Yeah. But you just got a little albeit not very interesting story about a thing I did. That's all fantasy football talk That's is. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's a passionate thing of yours. If you're passionate about fantasy football, mm. then you should talk about it because your friends want to hear you talk about stuff you're passionate Truly, about. Truly, I do want to. I think I've done this on Twitter a couple times where I've been like, "Hey, talk to me about your fantasy football team." I tr- like Brunt Touchables. People on the Patreon, let me know if there's anything interesting in your fantasy football league that happened. Hey, my entire plan was to get Clyde Edwards Hilaire because who wants Clyde Edwards Hilaire? And then next thing I know, people are jumping on Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I'm like, oh, shoot. So what did you do? This might be the most lucrative idea that you've ever come up with is just turning our Patreon into a place where you can go talk about your fantasy football team. Like, I think that people might just sign up like to our Patreon just so that they can send in fantasy football columns about their own team. So we're already doing a stream this week that involves input from the Patreon, but that would be a great show. You just have people on. Hey, tell me about I don't don't do a hey, who do I start? Who do I sit or anything? I'm not giving you any advice here. Just tell me what's going on. Yeah. What are the other it's what are the other like members of your fantasy league football like? therapy? Yeah. You just go to a stranger and you talk to them about like your your team and your problems. Yeah, you could show up and be like, "Hey, look, so I made an offer to my friend, and he always does this. And then he says to everybody, oh, so-and-so made me the worst offer for these guys. Well, if you didn't accept the offer, yeah, you probably think it's the worst right. offer. Most offers are not accepted. But was it really a terrible offer? Somebody's got to win some sort of trade. I'm not making an offer unless both I think guys I'm going wanna, to win both, it. Both per- participants want to think that they won the trade. Totally. So if that's happening to you, let me know because I've been through that sort of stuff yeah. before. Who'd you get, Pete? Who did I get in the trade? Yeah, in the uh, your draft. Uh, I I got Josh Allen. My running backs stink. Uh, I got Ramondre Stevenson as one of them because I think he's going to have a good year. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside of that, I don't. I ha- I got some good receivers, but I forget, forget which ones they were. Uh, I don't have enough patience to think about my fantasy team like a day after I draft them. I'm in a keeper league, so I had some good players. It's a deep league, but. I was able to keep Justin Herbert, which oh, is important Henry. to me. Oh, that's a big guy. Yeah. I was able to keep Justin Herbert, David Montgomery, Terry McLaurin, and then because he was cheap, I kept Hunter Henry. I needed to make some sort of big splashes. Best player I got was Travis Kelsey, which 14-team league. Okay, not the worst. I'm not feeling amazing about my team, but I think that I'll be competitive. And that's all I want to be is competitive. Well, I mean, I I think that that's already a good team because you got Travis Kelsey and there are like four or five good tight ends. That's the thing, man. Why why do we live in a world where there are never good tight ends? Like it's always in fantasy football that you're like, I got to get like – Two, one of the top two or three tight ends or else this year is going to be shot and I'm going to have a black hole in my roster. I'm always the guy with the terrible tight ends. Oh, really? I mean, I... So, it's a keeper league. I had... It's been going on for a long time. I got Gronk his second year, so I was set for a little while at tight end. But generally, I don't like to know that I'm going to have a hole on my roster. So, that's why I go after, say... And Mark Andrews was kept this year, so... I go after Travis Kelsey. The issue is, tell you what, I don't have receivers. It's like by going by spending big on that, then you're not gonna yeah. be able to spend big somewhere else. And again, this is an auction league for all of you who are interested. This will be time stamped, maybe, who knows, if you want to just skip over the fantasy talk. But I don't know. I hope that you have a good season. I hope yeah. that you're competitive. My uh my fantasy hockey league did not was not allowed to use the term uh auction draft. 
You told me uh, yeah. about this. Yeah, I guess they're changing it to like salary cap draft now. I'm cool with that. Because of like the implications and history of auctions. Yeah, like auction isn't yeah. a bad word, but when you're talking about people, yeah, it's, it's easy for your yeah. brain to go to a not terrific place. But we'll see. I only do one fantasy league, famously. Yeah, I do. I, two. One with my friends and one in the... Uh, I, did I tell you about my absolutely bizarre fantasy football league that I participated in uh, last year? No. Uh, the one where if your kicker misses an extra point, you lose 50 points. Oh, yes. Yes. And it is the most absurd thing because uh, Justin Tucker was taken in the second round of our draft this week because he never misses extra and do, do points. You have, do you have to start a kicker? You have to start a kicker uh. or you're fined like 50 bucks. Nice. We also do fines. Yeah. So it goes into a fine pool, and then the uh, I forget how we decide the the fine pool at the end of the season, but somebody wins the fine pool. Not to tell tales out of school. You want to know the most insane thing about my fantasy league? Actually, there's a the the people in it are the is the <laughs> insane thing of the fantasy football league. In if you don't win, if you lose in the finals, you're commissioner next year. That sucks. And it makes it so a good player. Is running things. Yeah. You like to have somebody who's competitive, taking things seriously. By the way, I've said competitive a few times. That's my that's my new thing. I'm trying out. I'm calling things competitive. Okay, I like meaning this. like, hey, uh, sorry, I didn't leave earlier. Uber was ridiculous. The, the the surging was ridiculous, but I was able to lock in a competitive price. I'll be there soon. So anyway, uh, the same person has lost the last two years and has been commissioner back-to-back years. His first act upon becoming commissioner each time has been to kick a member of the league out. Wow. <laughs> and both times it was because... Oh, actually, one was more so than the other. But one of the times was because the person was selling at the trade deadline, traded Alvin Kamara to me, and then... I beat that guy in the finals because I had Alvin Kamara, which there could not be a more biased move in the world. And I felt very bad for this person who got kicked out. (laughs) But also, that is unquestionably hilarious. That is amazing. That is the only thing that would make anybody else in the league want to become commissioner. He's like, oh, cool. If I lose in the finals, I get to like just boot my worst enemy out of the league or make an, an outrageous change. I'm into losing the final. And we were talking, we all met up the night before the draft, and we were saying, all right, so when you're commissioner next year, who are you kicking out? And we were just discussing like people who might be on the, the fence. There's one kid who's really, really good, and he always makes the playoffs, but he's never won. And we're like, do we just tell him, like, yo, win it all this year, we're kicking you out? <laughs> or you, you better win it all or come in second. That would make it like the first ever... Uh, like salary cap uh, league slash survivor league. Yes. And so like, survive, <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, relegation. No, no. Like basically survivor league. It's where, you know, if not everybody lasts in this league. We've, man. Somebody's on the block every year. We've had people quit the league. We've had people storm off the best. But we have a uh, guy in our league who is basically Leon in that uh, our friends invited him to join the league because they were friends with him. None of us knew him. Then there was a massive falling out and our friends angrily quit the league and this guy just stayed none of us have ever met him and like we all have like these like friendly rivalries with him and everything and i he's my favorite member of the league i think it's so that funny that is fucking incredible he just stayed it's that. this is like probably like 9 years later i fucking he's love just, that none of us have ever met him you know what you don't play video games that is the closest you'll ever get to just like a video game friend ah okay i mean i do have people in this league that i've never met but they're at least friends with somebody in the league yeah but yeah n- nobody knows this guy i mean like i have a few, i have a few of those where like my friend will like just like bring a stranger in uh to like our video game party when we need like another one mm-hmm. and then like if you if the night goes well the games go well like you're probably gonna stick send that guy a friend request and then like when your friend's not on you invite that guy and then you just become friends with that person. It's a resource. It's yeah. good to know. Good to have bench people. That's right. Uh, but it is it, it is fantasy football season. So Taylor Swift has announced she's got a new album coming mm-hmm. on October 21st called Midnight's. 13 tracks. Got a very 1970s aesthetic. We don't know if Jack Antonoff is involved. My guess is no. I've, I've received some tips on who is involved, but we'll 
wait until that's a little more concrete. New Taylor, Peter. Yeah, why you say no on Antonov? I feel like that's just like the 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 horse in the stable at this point. Attached to the hip. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't tweeted anything involving the project. In fact, his last tw- most recent tweet is solar power forever. So maybe Taylor was going to invite him to do the project, checked his Twitter, and was like, he did solar power? <laughs> uh. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, interesting. Uh, my big takeaway from that was, number one, uh, she's releasing the album on the same day as the Carly Rae Jepsen album is coming out. Mm-hmm. And as a person, I, I don't feel like you need to pick sides, but as a person who can really only focus on one thing at one time uh, in full, I'm going to go to the Carly Rae Jepsen album first. I think I will too. Although for some reason, I'm more willing to hear this without wanting to die than I have been with the last two Taylor Swift albums. Famously, I had some sort of personal crisis when Folklore came out. Really did not want to deal with new Taylor Swift with uh, where the world was at that time and didn't care much for Folklore anyway. Thought that Evermore was okay. Lover was fine for me. The last time I think I really enjoyed a Taylor Swift project was Reputation, an album that is deeply flawed certainly has its warts but something that i still like because it's in my estimation the last time she went for it yeah i mean like i don't feel like uh like i I mean like i i wasn't blown away by evermore or uh folklore but i liked both of them and i thought that they were both like nice um that would be like the best way that i can describe them they're like nice and just enjoyable and like I know that you. I've gone to bat against. I've gone head to head with you. You definitely on like folklore. them more than I do. Yeah. Folklore yeah. specifically, because you're like just folklore is a bad album, and I I don't. I, I think don't it's think bad. That. I think it's boring. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean I would tend to agree with you a little bit, but I like that. So what I say, it's nice. That boring can be nice. Um, but I, uh, you know, I the first time, the last time that I've been sort of blown away by Taylor Swift was like maybe one or two singles off of Lover. Mm -hmm. And then, like, before that, I mean, you're right, Reputation and 1989 both absolutely did it for me. But haven't, like, haven't been in love with a Taylor Swift project since then. What do you think this sounds like? Because as I said, the the imagery and the thing that, and the, the, specifically the cover and then the picture of her in, I don't know if it's the hotel room where she wrote, we lie awake in love and fear, turmoil and tears, stare at the walls and drink until they speak back. We twist in our self-made cages. I'm not going to continue reading this. If you yeah. want to read it's it's long and uh, honestly not very interesting. But it does say that uh, it's the story of 13 sleepless nights scattered throughout my life and that it'll be out on October 21st. It's a very 70s looking aesthetic. Uh, that to me maybe says that there will be like drums and it'll be less of a folky album and that it might try to be not necessarily classic rock, but that's what you think when you think seventies. But it's something a little peppier. It feels uh, a little it, rockier. It it feels like possibly like synthy, angsty rock kind of ish. I I'd say it would fall somewhere in that where I'm expecting it to land. I'm a little like concerned about the fact that it's like all surrounding heartbreak. Or, yeah. Or like I think right. It's like uh, or no, it's like loneliness, heartbreak. It's all sad things yeah i mean this is i love sad things but like i it's a little concerning to me that the entire project is that we'll continue the conversation but i just think that uh the the branding of taylor swift as being sad boy season really ruffles my feathers actually it doesn't really upset me but i just uh to quote the uh, interesting Quentin Tarantino. I just reject that hypothesis. Not yeah. that she can't be sad, but that like this is kind of the brand, and it's like it falls like somewhat close to like appropriation. <laughs> I was going to say it's doing what is of the times, right? And a lot of people do that, but I don't know. I I just told Taylor Swift to like, hey, if you're going to be this big super mega star who's really running shit, run shit. Yeah. Don't say don't. Say, okay, on Lover, I'm going to try to do a a Janelle Monae song because Janelle Monae is cool right now. Like, yeah, Yeah. Janelle Monae is really cool. You got to be calling your own shots, though. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. And now, like, if you, if she, like, 
I I think that like the whole past two albums has sort of been like a complete rebrand of Taylor Swift and her image where like she's sort of like stripping things down, uh, being more real because she's like taking a more like fuck you approach. Mm. I'm I'm not going to like leave up this all this like glitter and shit anymore. And so it feels like that's sort of like a point of no return almost where like it fe- would feel sort of disingenuous for her to go back to very shiny pop. What if she stayed in reputation mode for the rest of her career instead of doing like Lover? Di- what if she was about to release <laughs> yeah. her fourth straight album of like, yo, 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 <laughs> Taylor in the house. I am loud. You're quiet as a mouse. What? Yeah. I'm Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's famously what reputation sounded like. I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> she said, yo, 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 a bunch. I think it would be funnier if she if she did that now. Like instead of doing it four, four times in a row, if she yeah. did that and then like after Folklore and Evermore, she just went back to the most... Uh, audacious brand of taylor swift she's like you know what i'm returning to my roots (laughs) my roots of reputation yo uh yeah but i know i like that the (laughs) reputation voice that uh that i just accidentally did was sir mix a lot (laughs) yeah it was exactly dial 1-800 taylor swift (laughs) big reputation yeah, Taylor Swift's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but I, I, what I was like, what I was trying to get at is that just that, like, I, I don't want to feel like Taylor Swift is Bruno Marsing, like her, her like whole entire image, like to be of what's popular at the time. Yeah. Let's, let's see. I never trust a narcissist, but they love me. So I play them like a violin, and I make it look so easy. Because for every lie I tell them, they tell me one, two, three. It's how the world works. Now all he thinks about is me. They said I did something bad. Reputation. (laughs) This is definitely going on YouTube as what if uh, reputation but Sir (laughs) (laughs) Mix-a-Lot. It's, uh, yeah, I don't want to make fun of any of the YouTubers that do that, but I, I can think of like eight YouTubers who would do that yeah. and probably do numbers on it. <laughs> yeah. This won't do numbers, though. <laughs> hey, you want to talk numbers? The wait is almost over. A new football season is about to begin. Get ready for the NFL Week 1 action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To celebrate the return of football, DraftKings is giving new customers a can't-miss offer. Bet just $5 on any football game and get $200 in free bets instantly. Just like that. You want more action for opening night? Everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. Get up to seven. You win. Bet on any NFL team of your choice. And if your team leads by seven points at any point during the game, you get paid instantly. Even if your team loses. Might have to do that one. (laughs) That sounds like a lot of fun. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code WASHED to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code WASHED only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I guess that means I do two DraftKings podcasts now, huh? Oh, that's right. That's right. My voice hurts so much (laughs) from enunciating at a little bit lower of a normal voice that I do. I was going to say, next time we do anything with uh, the Wash guys, yeah. I was thinking this independently of what we just did. Um, we should just both speak like 5% lower and just see if anybody notices it. I don't hate that idea. If That was way more. I think hey that guys, was too much. I got to find my level. Hey, here. guys. Hey, let's. Do you want to try to do. Do you want to try to. That, 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 that I think is. Uh, that's an appropriate, could be the voice that I'm using, voice. I, it sounds like we're trying to... I'm straining a little bit it, doing it, though. It sounds like we're trying to find the uh, the level of voice that it would make us sound normal if somebody played it at, at the podcast at, like, 1.25 speed. Love that move. Let's let's try to do that. It's got a... 
Let's get a lot lower. Let's get a lot lower. Would we have to do? Would we We'd have, have to, to speak? Would we have to slower? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. It wouldn't just have to be lower. It would be slower, lower and slower, baby. Lower and slower. It's brunch on washed media. Fantasy football season is around the corner. I can go deeper than this, <laughs> but I do think this more or less. I'm gonna throw in some vocalized pauses. Uh, <laughs> is the correct pitch. The correct pitch. The correct pitch. Hey. The, uh, why did... Uh, why did the... Why did the Red Sox win? They didn't. Because that famously... Because they threw the correct pitch. Ooh. Not Ooh, I bad. Love that one, my friend. Sorry to anybody who's listening to this podcast in the car. With what if they're for the first accidentally time? listening <laughs> at normal speed? That was like a. We just did like a. If Ween podcasted in the '90s, that was like a Ween song. <laughs> Sounded really weird. Playing with pitches. Weird stuff. Really, really apologize to anybody who played that out loud. Shout out all the brunch patrons. Mm -hmm. Hop on the Patreon, where this week we will roll out a new streaming offering. It's called Prompted. And it's the show version of Prompt Twitter. You give us inane questions. What's a song you like that's fast? Who's a woman? And we go on them, <laughs> and we will answer with uh, a guest. We'll go long on them, I should say. Yeah, hell yeah. I like. I really. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, you kind of like text me today. You're like, hey, if you don't want to do this, we don't have to do it. But I was like, oh, oh, I trust me. I want to do it. The thing is, it's such a simple idea that there's been no uh, like massaging of the idea or anything like. We've been, uh, I, man, I just got to say, it's like quick side note, we've just been like planning shit of late. My yeah. favorite activity has just been like planning with Pete. Mainly it's because we go to a brewery yes, and bring a laptop yeah. and uh, I look at like the notes after and I'm like, these are things that we've always said we wanted it was, to do. <laughs> We say this every year. It's like two children that had like get the opportunity to be like pretend adults. Yes, but like we have like <laughs> big suits and uh, briefcases. <laughs> we hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to do business. Hi, whiskey, please. <laughs> At a brewery. <laughs> One alcohol, my friend. <laughs> yes, uh, it's basically us playing pretend adult, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a mutual office hours. Thing. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's exactly what it, that is. And then, like, that's what I was gonna say. It's like it, it, it's building on the idea of going to a coffee shop to like just get a break. Yeah. And now we're like getting a break together, mm -hmm. but also being productive, which is fun. Yeah. Uh, but the the idea of prompted needs it but when we when we've come up with stuff it's been ideas presented there is probably like a well what do you mean explain further mm -hmm. kick it around back and forth find it would be funny if it happened this way and then like before you know it you have an idea this there's it's it was so like, simple wanna that do it? there's mm -hmm. nothing yeah th okay cool in fact you guys can participate if you g give us how can this be even a different idea because it's it is it's just so simple you give us prompts Go on the Patreon. It'll be up right now, uh, a space for the prompts. And you give us a prompt. We will have a guest. We've already got one booked, but I don't want to announce who it is because things change and I don't want to put this person on the spot. But we're going to have a guest when we do it and we'll stream it and we will only answer questions from patrons. If the guest says, how about this? They're not a patron. Unless the guest is a patron, they may not submit a prompt. Hell yeah. Uh, we did receive a prompt upon telling people we were going to do this game. By the way, this show is probably... It's probably been done a million times and it's just been called something d different. But anyway. Uh, I mean, that's life at this point. Everybody's right. done everything before. You just have to find a new way or a different element to it. I said that because as I was saying this, I was like, wait, is this KFC radio? <laughs> it's just like... Give, submit a question to us and we'll answer it. Every, but this is a prompt. We don't want to do Completely a different. like. Uh, what's the what's the what what's the meanest thing you've ever done or something like that? No, that's not a prompt. What kind of trash ass prompt is that? We want something like this. What's a non domesticated animal you wish you could have domesticated as a pet? 
Hmm. Is this we are we doing this now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, non-domesticated animal you which you could have a domesticated as a pet. Uh, I would say like, like uh, honestly, like a, a raccoon. A <laughs> raccoon would be fun as hell. A trash panda. Huh? Yeah, those things are cute. Get a bad rap. I mean, they're kind of scary. Right. I feel like there's because there's famously there's flying raccoons. I don't want one of those. I want the ground ones. When I think of raccoons, I think of them just kind of like lunging onto things and latching onto them. Yeah, but I, I feel like, you know, if you domesticate one, it could be that's essentially th- like a, it'd be a different animal. And that's the thing. I think that mine is a a kangaroo. I, wh- a, because they take up so much space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, like if you at- had a kangaroo going right now. You'd need to be like, where is the kangaroo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would the dog the... or the cat can be wherever, but it's like, where is the kangaroo? And also, it's a two for one because famously, the kangaroo uh, will have a joey with it. True. <laughs> yes. It only comes. It's only a package deal. You walk out and you're like, oh, no, it's the joey. Where is the kangaroo? I've just found the joey. But the I, kangaroo got in the cupboards again. You know what, though? That doesn't sound very domesticated, though. So, again, yeah, this would be but, a but domesticated... Here, so, here's where it becomes interesting. is because dogs and cats, famously domesticated, mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't always mean that they're well-behaved. Oh, don't I know it. So, I like that you picked an animal that literally could kick your fucking ass if it's having a bad day. Right. <laughs> they like... The cool thing about kangaroos, though, is, like, if a dog's being a brat, what's going to do... Well, it might bite you, actually. But uh, it might pee. It might poo where it's not supposed to. I love kangaroos. Famously, they pack that wall up. (laughs) So I love the idea of being like, look, kangaroo, down, down, down. And it's so mad, it runs over and punches the wall. (laughs) Adam Driver. You never play with me. You are the worst (laughs) owner. I'm more of I'm more laughing at the idea of like you showing up to work with like a black eye on a Monday and being like Yeah, my kangaroo kicked my <laughs> ass again. Can we move on? Having to show up to explain to your boss that your pet fucking punched you in the eye. Like imagine showing up to work right now and be like, ah, how'd you get that black eye? My dog punched me in the face. They're like, they gotta uh, you dude, you gotta put that kangaroo down. Are you are you going to walk up to that kangaroo with a needle? Because I'll tell you what's going to happen. Sneak preview. This guy. Yeah, I do like the... Uh, the Joey's like do really like... quiet the whole time. Like, <laughs> he always does this. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the I'm idea of you, twist. This kangaroo sucks. <laughs> Joey just being like, are there no kangaroo foster homes? In the yeah, area? I, I do. Get me out of here. I am. Th- there is no shot. I am going to. I'm going to grow up to to not have I like am, trust issues. I am not going to college. This this is a bad kangaroo. I don't know. Mm, but what if it's a really nice kangaroo? That's what I'm Come saying. Home, it's got like. Yeah. I feel like I could see a kangaroo wearing. And I was going to say an apron. Yeah. That would suffocate the Joey. That's right. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's, I don't know, it goes under. You figure out the technology. We're domesticating kangaroos. It's, you can come up with an apron. It's, it's an apron with like a doggy door for the Joey. For the Joey. And yeah. the Joey also is wearing an apron. That would be like, that's yes. the cutest part. Oh, yeah. Whenever the kangaroo gets dressed up, the Joey wears the same If I was thing. good at art, man, as soon as we were done uh, recording this podcast, I would go draw that. I've been thinking of getting into uh, art because I, I, I like my Photoshopping and... I can Photoshop a thing, but I'm not you as can't good at Photoshop just like Photoshop an idea. Yeah, right. Like if I yeah. have an idea, and honestly, it's the same thing. If anybody plays like music or anything, you can hear a song and then go to an instrument and know how to play it. But if you have an idea in your head, it can be a little tougher to get out the way you want it. Mm-hmm. That's my relationship with anything like drawing, artistic sort of way. I'd like to get a little better at it, but the people who are good at it are like. You can just tell that that's actually what they're good at. Right. I don't know if that's a learned skill. No, no. It's, that's definitely like a you have you have it or you don't. Yeah. I'm going to get it. I don't think you can get I'm it. I'm going to chase it. I don't think you can get it. That and have I told you about the slap shot thing? No. I'm 34. Gross. How, if I were 
staying in hockey shape and good at hockey, this would be around when I'm starting to get pretty bad at hockey. I never really had a slap much of a slap shot. This is these are like my final days of if I had a good slap shot to have a good slap shot. So I've been thinking of I don't know if I like hire a trainer or a coach or something like that. You just want to say that you had a good slap shot. I want to have time. a slap shot before it goes away. I feel that way about skateboarding. Yeah? Yeah, I always wish that I it's could skateboard. the one skateboard. that got away? Yeah. I could see you skateboarding. It's it's one of those things, though. It's definitely one of those things like that you cannot pick up later in life because you gain the fear of fucking up. Yeah. And like you can't break your wrist at 35 years old. You know what the biggest... Dude. I mean, you absolutely can break your wrist. I was going to say. Technically speaking, yes. The injuries I've but, suffered in adulthood. <laughs> but socially speaking, you cannot break your wrist as like a 35-year-old. You can't break it skateboarding. Maybe you can yeah, Exactly, lie. yeah, right, yeah. You can't break your wrist skateboarding at 35, like socially as an adult. Well, you're about to go in the dunk tank for the first time. I am, yeah. I'm a little worried because that is the, the site of your injury about five years ago. Four or five years ago? I wish I could say it was five years ago. I think it was like three. I know. You know, it actually probably was four years ago. Uh, but every year there is a uh, at Idle Hands, there's a charity dunk tank. And uh, I've had the pleasure of doing it for a little while now. And that's famously where I shredded my knee <laughs> somehow yeah. simply by falling into water. <laughs> Absolute non-contact injury. Just pathetic, disgusting. I was screaming the rest of the day while getting progressively drunk because I was in such like outrageous pain. I had a torn MCL. I was screaming that like my knee was ruined. I thought I had a torn ACL. I was actually pretty close and onto something. And yeah, it was the worst. But it's a fun time. Pete's gonna do it this do year. Doing it for the first time. I think, and I hope that I have better luck. Uh, m- I think did you you did you like sprain it from hit, hitting the bottom or I believe it was climbing back up my foot slipped and then I just fell back in okay all right but it was it like did it, when you say non contact oh no it wasn't like I hit it and jammed it up or something okay that man if if that were in play you might be looking more at like a spinal or Ooh. neck injury or something so don't do that no definitely don't do that uh i you have to go down really hard <laughs> and I, I just don't think that i would touch the bottom of the tank either way that's true so yeah i don't think i think that you you go in slowly and you it's weird the first time every year though because you're like wait i'm really about to fall into this water this feels unsafe and then again famous last words it's safe but people throw at you and it's a good time i'm, I'm excited uh i've also I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but uh, there's I know there's a Steinhoisting con- yes. contest, and I'm kind of making saying, you do that. You ca- you've been saying for years, you're like, "Yo, you got to do the Steinhoisting contest." I think you could win. Got famously, I've got those short, strong arms, mm-hmm. and I think it might be in my wheelhouse. You could, I mean, famously, you're in the best shape of your life, That's so true. you should just practice going like that. Mm-hmm. And I think you do great, but I would feel bad if you won because. There is, I think, like a back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back champ, and he's a super nice guy, and he, when he's there, you're like, I know what that guy's about to do. He's about to win that Stein hoisting competition. I just feel bad. It's, it sounds like my time. It would be competitive. Mm-hmm. It'd be competitive. Oh, man, I missed her in the Taylor Com- Swift conversation. I meant to say I just want her to put forth a competitive album. <laughs> that's, 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 a good, that's, a good, uh, that's a good landing spot for you. What? Like just wanting just to be wanting, competitive. Just wanting it to be competitive. Wanting to feel like you've got a chance to defend it or go the other way and say it's realistic. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Just be realistic. Um, we we were planning at work the other day. We were going to do a thing with uh, Gab Ginsburg uh, of Consequence, who famously I'm not a huge music critics guy, mm-hmm. but she's really good and will point out something that you hadn't heard before. So we were going to have her on anyway to discuss the VMAs. And when I got out of the Spoon concert and I had more than two text messages, it means one of two things. Yeah, like something horrible has happened in my life or Taylor (laughs) Swift is coming out with a new album. (laughs) And uh, I was like, oh, no. Now, like, is this going to be the world raining down Taylor Swift stuff? Which it is. I mean, I'm sure you saw the insane 
stuff with the Easter eggs and reading into numbers and everything yeah. like that. Oh my god, that was one of the, like the most insano braino tweets I've ever seen. The Yo. guy just being like here's every number that I can think of and why it relates to the Taylor Swift album. Yeah, and I don't want this to come off as shade or or being petty or whatever. Do you know who that person is? No. That's the guy that does uh, the Taylor Swift podcast with Nora. Oh, God. So I don't oh, want no. it to seem like I'm taking a shot at him because I like this guy by association. But, yeah. But, uh, no, like, don't, on allow, that tweet, don't allow your brain to be completely programmed yeah. to Taylor Swift-isms. Yeah, like... Again, and, I like this guy by give... association, but police station or hospital? you got to go to one when you <laughs> do that tweet. Absolutely true. And I'm yeah. guilty of that for a million tweets I've done. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. police station, hospital. Yeah, pick Your one. choice. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's, that is a great, uh, a great way to brand a tweet, uh, like brand a series of tweets. <laughs> police police station. station or hospital. I, <laughs> like, you know how Rex Chapman had blocker charge? No. Where, like, it would just be, uh, there would be, like, a person getting run over by another person or an object or something, Mm -hmm. and people would quote tweet it at Rex Chapman and ask block or charge. Oh. And so now when somebody comes out with a psychotic tweet, I want people to tweet at us and say, police station or hospital, and we're never going to answer it. Right. I was going to say, you don't even need to toss a question mark on there. You yeah, just right. Do police station or hospital. Right. Yeah. So I like that becoming a thing. Please take note of that. Make that happen for us in the community. I want so many tags, police station or hospital. Uh, speaking of outrageous tweets, you know who's got back to back weeks of uh, the going V? Of, of surfing the, of, of shooting to the heavens? Which is I've been tweeting a little less, but. Maybe just of higher quality. Yeah, maybe. Uh, do you know what the tweet that did numbers this week was? Uh, yeah, it was the uh, the Patriots one, right? The one where uh, and it was an were... intentionally it was an intentional police station or hospital tweet, <laughs> but people thought it was serious and t- didn't even spread it around being like, "Oh, uh, this is wrong." They were like, "This is right." <laughs> so the Patriots famously cut. Both Dalton Keene and Devin Asiasi, the tight ends for whom they traded up in the third round a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And everybody knew at the time, these guys aren't good, bad picks. And they've now moved on from those players. So whenever the Patriots get rid of a bad draft pick, what everybody does is they point out, I guess people do this definitely with the Bruins. Yeah. Um, but you probably do it with all teams. 2015. Who went after those guys? Who could you have had instead? It's in... in- the hockey's defense. The Bruins, oh, the Bruins won in 2015 is... is allowed because they were three straight picks. They had three straight picks in the first round and four went chalk to right. go off the board. Yeah. For They went chalk with one pick and then went off the board for two picks. And if they just gone chalk for three picks, they would have had two really good players. Really and good players. And it missed players. on the yeah. chalk. Yeah. Or they could have just with... drafted well and gotten all three In other players. situations, I dislike when people do that a little bit Mm -hmm. is like of course good players are going to go after non-good players it happens all the time and in the hockey there's hockey draft there's so much projecting right and in the teens you really can't it's not a safe bet that you're getting a star right with a hundred percent but that happened to be the year that all of the players in the teens (laughs) were like the best hockey players in the world you want to know why because the, uh, the teams went right before them fucking took Went off the board three times in a row. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did the players who were... I hate this. It sounds like I'm like bragging about the tweet, but I'm just more saying explaining that... Explaining it. Yeah. Um, Love when you explain your own tweets. I'm mansplaining. Um, <laughs> I, t- I, I could have mansplained the tweets to Twitter, but... I like they didn't get. I that do. Makes, I do like better. the audiences that you uh, you tapped into with that one because it's you know one that won't get it mm-hmm. and they're going to be insane about it because of course they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, the other one is people that get the joke and are going to think it's very funny because it is. I've got to say it's something that I think that we should start implementing anyway. Anytime you, you folks at home. Uh, anyway, I did uh, players who were drafted after these two guys, Patriots drafted. And I just named the top picks of the next year's draft because <laughs> technically they were drafted Correct. after. And there was like maybe four or five people who are like, uh, and, oh, and I wrote, this is a fact. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, or uh, very few people were like, you can't argue with this. This is what happened. And then a lot, but a lot of people were just like, 
oh my god, Belichick sucks. You guys suck without Brady. And people are doing like vict- anti-Patriots victory laps. That is incredible. I did not think that like uh, I did not think you'd get the anti-Patriots like what a bunch of dummies response. Yeah, I thought it would mostly be people understanding the joke uh, and or uh, just understanding that you are an idiot. Yeah, in part, somebody responded. They were like, "You can't tweet sarcastic things like this, and uh, like based on your other tweets, and expect us to and not think of all my tweets are jokes." Every single one. Yeah. <laughs> Not since I covered the Bruins, which was uh, years and years ago. You've got some I, sports I, tweets. Like Ernest. some like, like information or like take things? Yeah. Some takes. Yeah. Like I'll be like, shut up about Mac Jones. Yeah. yeah. But even that, if I say shut up about Mac Jones, I probably seem like a but person it, who maybe does some but jokes. Even, but even if you were a person that like did have serious tweets sometimes, like that doesn't mean you can't throw in a joke tweet every once in a while. Free country, man. Yeah. Nobody has to be one thing. Yeah, be yourself. Let your yeah. No, a kangaroo can put on a uh, an apron every now and then. That's you know fucking what I'm right. Yeah, I can't wait for Spike to you know what the have cool to pa- do the art on. Yeah, I know this. You know what the cool part about putting on an apron is? What's that? You get to take it off at some point. That's right. You can so be. You're never permanently you wearing that apron. Yeah, unless you get a tattoo of a kangaroo wearing an apron. Holding a pie while a Joey, I'm this might be my next tattoo, with a Joey wearing the same apron. What are we thinking for the apron? I'm thinking it would be a black and white tattoo, of course, but I'm thinking the apron is like a light blue with like Ooh. white dots. I don't know. I had uh, I had uh, in my head a white apron, but with like a, a pretty thick red outline. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. And it's got yeah, it's got the that's that's nice. It's classy. I like that. Okay. This apron's got some class. This, this mean, ain't uh, your daddy's apron. This, cap- this apron and this kangaroo have some class. Um, is this, this is going to be in- an incredible episode for that Brunch Out of Context account. Yeah. Like, in six months, they're going to tweet, like, 19 things from this episode. And I'm going to be like, when the fuck did we say that? I never really get that. I, I never understand. Really? I, I never remember saying any of it. But I, I never just remember like, saying any of it. It sounds plausible that we'd say that at some point. Yeah, but I just, I, it's, it's crazy to me that I, could, that I cannot think of uh, like the context in any of those tweets. Uh, we got to shout out our friend Will DeFreeze, by the way. He also uh, had a banger of a tweet what today. Was it? Did you see it? No. Let me pull it up. I mean, I laughed out loud and smiled deeply and liked. I didn't retweet. But uh, 11 hours ago, he tweeted, My son, Seven, has discovered D's nuts jokes, and it's all he says now. <laughs> Everything is D's nuts. He simply can't stop. I asked him where he heard that joke. He made me promise that if he told me, he wouldn't get in trouble. I agreed, so he leans in and whispered, D's nuts. 429 likes on that bad boy. <laughs> uh, I feel like Parks is going to get like the Nirvana kid treatment. Yeah, yeah, in like yeah. 12 years, people are going to be like, Damn, that's the D's nuts tweet, kid. They'd be like the original one, or what? There was the, every week there was like five people who tweeted it. In like twelve years, there's just gonna be a like a Google headline or like one of those like spam headlines. Here's you'll never believe what the D's nuts kid tweet kid looks like now. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Dave responded with uh, the stars fan. Holding up the banner that says, thank you, sir. Can we have another? <laughs> Amazing. I love Dylan. He's the best. Dylan's my favorite person in the whole wide world. I love listening to their podcast. I like how much they say famously. I laugh. I like hearing them talk about golf. I don't, again, <laughs> the fantasy football thing. I don't know shit about golf. Yeah. But they'll say, hey, man, I went out there. I golfed. I messed up when I golfed, and I'm like, oh, fuck, they messed up. Again, it's a friendship thing. If you, if your friends are talking about something that they're passionate about, you're a bad friend if you're not interested in listening to them. Yeah. Because now we got bad blood. <laughs> Reputation. Speaking of bad blood, we Ooh. saw a bad movie that had a lot of blood in it. Oh, boy. The Invitation is a supernatural horror film written by Blair Butler and directed by Jessica M. Thompson. It follows Evie a young woman with no family who, after taking a DNA test, learns she's 100% in for a spooky trip to England. It co-stars Hugh Skinner, a.k.a. Harry from Mamma Mia. Young Harry, I should say. Young Harry. 
famously, important. Old Harry is played by Colin Firth. Uh, and it's been panned by critics. The Invitation currently has a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 54% audience score. I feel like a crazy person saying this. I did not think it was that bad. Um, I don't think it was that bad, but I was really close to thinking it was that bad. It's bad, but it was going to be bad. It was. So I had a misunderstanding of what this movie was because I was the one that suggested that we see it and review mm, it on the podcast. Famously. I thought that it was a pretty run of the mill Blumhouse movie. Ooh, I, I don't, don't think even it's know if it was. It's a it's, Sony movie. Mm. Uh, I thought that it was a Blumhouse movie. I thought we were getting a pretty simple situation here where uh, a woman is meeting some strangers mm -hmm. and they're very rich, which surprise means that they're extremely fucked up and they're doing some fucked up shit. And she gets in invited into that. And that was it. I did not realize that we were getting into supernatural territory. And that's. That really adds a whole other element of like, hey, if you're not going to do this right, it fucking sucks. Maybe you could return it for a different product. It sounds like you were looking for Ready or Not or famously, Would You Rather. There is also a, a, another invitation. The invitation. Yes, 2015. Is that um? Is that the uh, the Bateman movie? Let's see. The no, it's not. Invitation. No, that's the that's the gift. Ah, right. That is the gift. I forgot about the gift. Okay, the invitation is. I believe that the invi the previous invitation. Logan Marshall Green. What? Hell yeah! Might have to see it. You know who I call? Uh, we have we taught we. Do, do new listeners even know about Logan Marshall Green? Uh, like wash listeners? The, uh, maybe not. But upgrade was pretty big. Who that do was, we? I can't even Logan remember. Green, we called right? him bootleg Tom Hardy, right? Bootleg Tom Hardy. Yes, wow. Yeah, yeah, that uh he I believe that people know about him now simply because of that movie Upgrade. Upgrade. I like that movie. That movie was really really good. Um I do like the idea of having a new segment um called Searching for a movie called The Invitation that's good. So next week we can revisit this uh, this segment and we can watch that The Invitation. And if that one's not good, we're going to have to keep looking. Love it. And the art for it is I uh, kangaroo <laughs> with a like detective hat on and a magnifying glass just like hopping around see this is where we're running into trouble because we want to put these uh, movie reviews on youtube and have them be oh yeah, uh, yeah have them be like sort of sort of in context and be accessible without listening to the full episode it took us our second movie <laughs> review to to, to completely get something that was mentioned in the earlier in the episode okay Awesome. So Hell far, yeah. so good. Going good. Uh, I also didn't know... I didn't know really what it was about. I knew that it was a supernatural one, and I knew that we'd be... I, I thought it was going to be a campy supernatural horror mu movie, which is exactly what it was. But I think the reason why people are crushing it is because of its quote-unquote reveal... I think that everybody knew going into the movie, if they knew what the movie was about, that that's what the reveal was going to be. I, however, did not know that. And I'm trying to say this without spoiling, but she goes on this trip because she's invited to a wedding by an, a member of her extended family, played famously by Hugh Skinner. And weird things are happening. You see people dying. There are hands that are sticking out of walls. It's creepy, crawly sort of stuff. I think that people, though, who... We're prepared for this movie. I don't know if it's shown in a in a trailer or something like that. Knew why those things were happening. I, a dummy who had not prepared, did not know why these things were happening. I didn't either. So I when it happened, I was like, ah, that's a plausible explanation. Okay, let's see where we go from here. Now we're set up for quite the third act. So I was kind of I felt like I was watching a movie the whole way. So here was my interpretation of that because I didn't really get it either. I spent a lot of time waiting for them to to get to the point and explain explain things a little bit. Uh, it did take a while for them to get there, and when they got there, I wanted nothing to do with it. Oh, really? <laughs> I wanted You're nothing like, to do with it. I was like, oh, I waited. I waited for this. Oh boy, I am not interested in this. I what I liked about it though is. 
And again, maybe people who watch these types of movies, I famously don't because I don't like jump scares. This is full of jump scares. Yep. Um, once you realize, oh, it's this, then a character is like, and you're probably wondering what this is. And I'm like, well, not anymore because you've kind of revealed it. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, my name is, and you're like, oh, no, I know what your name is. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know, and I, I, I got all this. And he's like, and now I will tell you my name and there's this like big and he's like and who is this person you ask i'm like oh no i know who that person is because right this is all falling into place. i got it okay so how are you guys gonna get out of it and he's like if you let me finish <laughs> so that, i could that, see that yeah so i could see so was it during this part that you were like bye yeah no well or i mean just that you didn't want it to be that thing? i didn't want it to be that and then like they keep they kept hinting at it yeah and I, and like the more and more they kept hinting at it I, it I lost like the 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 little bit of hope that i had that it wasn't gonna be that and so every little hint i was like oh oh don't go, don't do that don't go there and then once it was there i was like yeah okay i know that we were i knew with like most of my being that we were gonna get here but now that we've confirmed it i'm officially out i mean <laughs> It stinks that we can't spoil the, the thing that uh, is revealed, but the this whole family is prepared for this big reveal. She is brought to this wedding under quite the guise of deception, mm -hmm. and they all know what's happening. She does not know what's happening. Yet, for people who are in on it, they could not have chunked it worse. They did not understand the rules of their own game. They end up giving her, again, it's supernatural film, so it's not spoiling too much. They end up giving her some powers that me, a person who knows nothing about, let's say, the, the gothic type of film, was like, oh, well, once she has these powers, she'll probably be able to do these things. And the whole family's like, now... We don't think she'll be able to do these things. And we base that on we just don't know anything and we haven't prepared for this at all, even though this has been our plan the whole time. So she gets out of it in a completely understandable way. So it's disappointing, but it's again, I felt like I was watching a movie. It's <laughs> it's it's uh it's a situation of people chunking it on both sides, definitely. Because big time idiots on both sides, mm -hmm. like one of them was was really cautious about yeah. going on this trip to begin with, which makes a lot of sense. You're uh, going on a destination wedding trip with or on the word of a person that you literally just met. Yeah. And uh, like didn't didn't think to maybe get a plus one, even though it's a wedding held by like the richest people in all of England. Uh, and then on, on the other side, you have, uh, people that just like didn't anticipate any of them back, any of like the, the gifting of supernatural powers backfiring. So, uh, really not a lot of thought going into it on either side. One thing that distracted me the whole way, and here's where I got to take a few points off. So we're going to get into the high nineties here instead Can of, Can I get uh, into what distracted me? Yeah. It was the one redeeming quality of this movie. What? Uh, how good looking the male lead actor was. So, Thomas Doherty, he was extremely good looking. He was extremely good looking until a little change happened. And then that's, I was like, but that's, oh, that's why you cast that guy because he looks like he would make a good one of the things that he changes yeah. into. Boo. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see that. And, it, and I was like, how did I not know he was going to be a, let's say, schmampire? Right, yeah, right. <laughs> and you you, you always fall this rule, too, uh, where you're like, oh, that looks like it's going to be the bad guy. Uh, that guy did it. Like, You know who you taught know? me that rule? Who? Spike. Spike, really? So, so okay. I, I told you forever. I was like, oh, yeah, a friend uh, told me to start doing this when I watch movies. Yeah, it was Spike. It's if, if that guy looks like he did it, he probably did it. Or if so, yeah, and he... He used the example of uh, Spiral. He said he didn't watch Spiral because he said he knew who did it. And I was like, who did it? He goes, Max Minghella? I go, yeah, how'd you know? And he was like, oh, they put Max Minghella in it. He probably did it. Yeah, that's... Uh, it was like as simple as yeah. that. I was like, ugh! Yeah, I know. Yeah, and that guy does... Look like a schmampire. Yeah. Um, They're right. So. I mean, they cast a schmampire to play a schmampire. Yeah, and so, like, that was... That was my big redeeming quality of this movie was that guy was so good looking but then when they took it away from you by revealing him as the redacted uh yeah it was like well now i can't even enjoy that people are listening to this and they're like what are they talking about <laughs> there's so they're speaking in such code right now that that's right i can't tell uh join the patreon to figure out what vampire means we will post exclusively <laughs> 
You have to do the five, you have to do the ten dollar tier for that. By the way, on the prompt at the uh, no, I I forgot this is a thing for <laughs> YouTube. Uh, the thing that distracted me is they have specific bars on the windows in this palace, this mansion, whatever, and it's because there are birds that violently fly around and hit things, and they had to put these these bars on the window so they don't just fly into the window. But they still go outside? Yeah, that there are birds just like kamikaze you got birds in your house. Right, you got like dive bomb birds and you're going to go outside? I wouldn't they were having like events out there and everything. The whole time I'd be like I'm like that half the time I'm in Austin. I'm like well, these bats could come at any moment. <laughs> they have spe- they have to take specific precautions for their windows based on the end. This happens throughout the movie. They'll just be like in the room and you're just hear like bonk. Here I come. <laughs> like Birds uh, are crashing into everything. I also don't understand. I, I still don't understand tactically how the bars helped because the one time that we actually did see it fly into the window, it missed the bars and hit the window. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, bars that put, put this in. This is an spe- incompetent family. Bars putting putting in bars specifically to deter birds or prevent them from hitting your windows and then still having the bird hit your window. Seems like that's a bad uh, bad investment. Did you log it on Letterboxd? I did, and I wanted to start doing this when we review movies. It will remind me to do my Letterboxd rating and also kind of give the the listeners a bit of like a measured scale on where we're falling. Yeah. So I did log it on Letterboxd. I gave it one and a half star. Yeah, I'm still figuring out my rating system. I gave it a three. That's t- t- far too many. So I should be giving it a – based on – how it seems I felt about the movie, I should be giving it probably a two or something. Yeah, I mean, three out of five is like, yeah, I kind of liked it. Yeah. What's I felt like I was watching a movie? Two? You you would say that you kind of liked it? No, what's I felt like I was watching a movie? Oh, that's yeah, that's probably two. I think that's that... in like the one and a half to two range. It, like, I didn't. I didn't like seriously consider walking out of the theater, but yeah. it crossed my mind. That's a one and a half for me. Yeah. It's not particularly good. It is not good. I would not recommend this movie to even like my weird friends that are into supernatural stuff because it f- didn't feel like it was an accomplishment in like like the romance side of things, like the suspenseful side of things, yeah. or the supernatural side of things. And it didn't particularly look good. Uh, no. It had some attractive people in it. It had some attractive people, and, like, the lead performances were were good to, like, pretty good. Uh, and They worked like, with it. Yeah, none of the acting was a, was a real problem for me. It was more like the movie just looked, like, it looked kind of shitty. Yeah, I mean, it's what you get into when you see the non-Blumhouse Blumhouse movies. Mm-hmm. Like, this is... Like, I want, like, I want relatively shitty from a Blumhouse movie, and this still was disappointing to me. Is Escape Room a Blumhouse movie? I think it's not. I think it's not, but it's like, that is in the Blumhouse universe. Uh, Escape Room is not... Yeah, th- that's a Sony one. So that, I would say, is close to the gold standard of what you can hope for when you get into the non-Blumhouse PG-13 thriller. Mm-hmm. But this ain't Escape Room. This had some folks wanting to go see a different movie. You see that? You thought I would say like Escape or escape something? Escape the Room, yeah. Remember, the, that's what the, the haters of Escape Room 2, that was their, I remember there was like a headline that was like, Escape Room 2 makes you want to escape all right. <laughs> it was like, Nice. Also, that movie was good. I'm going to go watch was, Escape Room 2 later. It wasn't good, but it was better than this movie. That's for sure. What do you think Escape Room is on Rotten Tomatoes? The first one? Yeah. I'm going to say uh, 83. Escape Room is a 50. Wow. But it has a near... Wow. I don't even know what you would call well, it. Well, I was guessing based on um, a, a, a audience score. It's a 50 tomato meter yeah. and a 51 audience score. No fucking way. So That's crazy. everyone but us were with it. Let's see what Escape Room 2 is. Escape Room 2. Escape the room. Escape Room. Are there any other good movies coming up? Uh, oh, we're heading into fall, so yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, I want to definitely see the uh, the Olivia Wilde movie. Oh, uh, yo. That is bringing up a ton of drama. That was already at the top of the list of movies that I want. We had to, yeah. it, uh, for one of the shows at work, we had to do like a fall movie preview. Mm-hmm. And the one that I led with was Don't Worry, Darling. Yep. And that was before any of this stuff was happening. I didn't know that Shia LaBeouf was attached to it at any point. I didn't Same. know about the Olivia Wilde drama. Poor Olivia Wilde. She's going through... What do you mean? And I, I say poor, meaning like she's like had her hands full. She got served at uh, Comic-Con or whatever she yeah. was doing. And now she's fighting. Again, This it could be her... It could very likely be her doing, but I mean, she's it, fending off people yeah, with both arms right now. In, in some way, it is her doing no matter what, because she is not handling it well, is all I'm saying, is like... It, this seems like she's created some headaches that could have been avoided if she was like being advised by a good PR team or something. Yeah, she seems to be digging herself a bit of a hole. Well, I mean, directing. I don't know as much about filmmaking, but I would imagine a big imagine a big part of uh, being a director is like being a kind of coach or like GM like you're in charge of the thing and you got to keep everybody together and if you lose your cool they probably lose their cool type of thing this is I think just her second film that she's directed yeah. so the do first have to one remember was a smash success exactly too. but what was its problem I don't remember. Not much publicity didn't really they it was an under actually a coworker Sue O'Connell uh, said this the other day and I was like oh my god because it's it's easy to look at this and be like is this publicity stunt or whatever drumming yeah. up interest in the movie it's fucking working if it is but like the thing with Booksmart was nobody was talking about Booksmart until they saw it there wasn't and maybe it's like first time director high school movie I kind of get it but there wasn't a lot of hoopla for it until maybe like the months after it came out when when everybody started being like Maybe once it hit streaming services and more people started watching it, yeah. they're like, "Oh, this movie rocks!" And then it started picking up steam. So, like, going this is, in the opposite direction, yeah. we're going in the opposite direction, or like, I guess, flipping it on its head, where it, it's got a ton coming uh, as the movie is about to hit release. But is that going to make it possibly like fall victim to hype? I don't know. I mean, I was hyping it pretty highly. I think that uh, I'm nearing Florence Pugh fatigue. What? Uh, yeah. She's barely been in anything. No, but I mean, like, Florence the Pugh's stan fatigue okay. of, like, every... C- c- kind of, yeah, I mean, it's it's is it, similar is it to... Mac uh, Jones syndrome, where it's like, all right, we're, let's relax in talking about how good Florence Pugh is. I mean, I, I view it more as, like, I know how good Florence Pugh oh, is. Oh, really? Like, everybody... I'm I, still I don't know, waiting. I feel like people think that they are discovering Florence Pugh or whatever. It's maybe more similar to... It's kind of got some of the um, uh, uh, Chalamet fatigue slash Bridgers fatigue kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, she's your favorite. Let's breathe. So I I'm I fall more into the camp of like this movie for me may make or break like whether or not I think Florence Pugh is like legitimately great. I mean, she's going to be. She's got to do the heavy lifting. Yeah. She's starring opposite Harry Styles. A who, very inexperienced right. Harry Styles. We should not be expecting him to... If he steals the show, it's probably not great for Florence Pugh, but... I mean, so, they could both in, They could both be great. Yeah. Like, he could steal the show and she could still be great. I like the premise for this movie, though. I was always intrigued by it. Uh, I didn't love Booksmart as much as everybody else, oh, but I, did. I, I definitely came away from it being like, all right, Olivia Wilde. I got you. Like I'll, I'll be, I will be returning. I think there are big questions uh, to be answered or like come into more clarity with this movie. Number one, just, to, just saying, Florence Pugh is she for real? Is she elite? Uh, number two, like, is Olivia Wilde? Do we, like, is she going to be like approaching like fucking genius territory yeah. or whatever? Because if she goes two for two out of the gate. You know that people are going to be obnoxious about. Yeah, it. she'll be an A-list yeah. director. Uh, and then number three is Harry Styles. Like, is this a future for him? Because I know that he's done some acting. He was in yeah. Dunkirk, but like, he's never really been a leading man. And unless we're getting like duped here with him getting the poster, <laughs> uh, 
it seems like this is a real good opportunity to find out like if he is for real. Yeah. That video that I mean Shia LaBeouf came with the receipts. Uh that video yeah. was very clear like people management from Olivia Wilde where she's like I think that you know Florence is just in for a bit of a like reality check here. That's like the I don't want to talk shit about this person, but I'm showing you I'm willing to talk 5% of shit if that we can, makes you kind of come we can, to... We can talk secretive shit. Like, I, I I know what's in your head. Right. So I'm just going to acknowledge yeah. that that exists and your your feeling is your feeling and I'm not dismissing you here that's without like, being like, like look, so- I hate Florence Pugh yeah. because she probably doesn't. Although, actually, there's a some sort of feud between those two. I think so. Yeah. Like, that's part of the drama. It's, it's a very... Um, like, listen, I know so-and-so is difficult to work with sometimes, but you just have to be professional, blah, blah, blah. Like, when somebody says that to you in the office, that's like, hey, I, I need to, like, keep up appearances here, but I'm letting you know that I fucking hate this person. Yeah, so uh, don't worry, darling. October 21st, it's got 13 songs. Meet me at midnight. Go Carly Rae Jepsen. Go Texas. Ooh. Texas. That was an insane episode. Yeah, it was so much fun though.